everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am going to be participating in a costume collaboration and that is Pocket Swap. So a whole bunch of us are making pockets, whether that is historical like 18th century style pockets or modern day functional like utility pockets. We are making pockets and we are making them specifically for one other costumer and sending that off to that person and receiving one in exchange, opening it up and showing you what we got and who made it for us. And of course our process on how we are making that pocket for that initial person that we are sending to. This whole collaboration is being hosted by Jeanette of A Perfect Touch and I will link her channel down in the description below. And and since this video is coming out after the swaps of the pockets have already happened, I can tell you who it is that I am making this pocket in this video for, and that is Casey of Casey Renee Cosplay. Now, I have been chatting with Casey and following Casey for a fair amount of time now, and one thing that I really love about her and everything that she makes is that she, like me, kind of does a lot of those historical Disney mashups. She does a lot of Disney costuming in general, a lot of princess stuff especially, and a lot of them kind of have a historical twist to them. So. As you know, if you've seen my channel before, that is right up my alley. And so I figured that it would be fun to send Casey a historical pocket with Disney embroidery. So I'm going to be making a pocket similar to this one, which is one that I made for myself and did hand embroidery on, but I am going to be machine embroidering the pocket for Casey and I'm going to be embroidering it with some pretty special characters. So Casey, at the time of making this video, has pretty recently finished a purple aerial ball gown. And it just so happens that on my brother Quattro sewing and embroidery machine, there is a purple aerial ball gown embroidery. So it's like, oh my gosh, that is perfect. So I'm basing my entire embroidery design around that embroidery. And what I've done so far is that I have cobbled together several patterns that are all built into my machine and put them into one in the shape of pocket embroidery because you do typically have that shape where it's narrower up the sides and you have a little bit more down at the bottom here. So. The pocket for Casey is going to wind up a little bit smaller than this just because you can't resize Disney embroideries that are built into a machine. And so I'm having to work around that. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller than this, but not by much. And let me show you what I have put together. So this is the design that I've come up with. We have Ariel in that purple ball gown here and Tink up in the corner. And then these are, I think there's five total flower elements that I just assembled all together and kind of angled to be a pocket. Now I haven't tested this yet. Luckily this machine has a feature where you can scan in what you put in the hoop. And no, this is not sponsored by Brother, but I wish it were. Brother, please sponsor me. <laughs> but it has a feature where you can scan in what's in the hoop. So once I do that, it will show me like where the slit is going to be in the pocket because I'm going to draw that in. And I can always adjust the placement of these. But right now we have this is 8.12 inches tall and 6.06 .06 inches across. So it's a little small for an 18th century pocket, but not by a ton. And the pocket will go up higher than this as well. But this is that embroidered bottom. The slit should go to, I think, about like here ish, right around where Ariel's head is and then go up from there. And the slit is something that will really be cut and sewn in separately. It's not embroidered at all, but I wanna make sure the embroidery doesn't go over the slit because that would be a problem. So as you can see, this is going to be a humongous stitch out. Yeah, 70 minutes, that's gonna be great. But luckily it'll fit nicely in one of my larger hoops and there's lots of the thread color changes, but Honestly, I might play around with the order of stuff so that I don't have to continuously change colors where the flowers are, because what it's going to wind up doing is stitching one flower, doing the three colors on one flower, going to the next flower, doing the three colors on the next flower, et cetera, et cetera. I would really rather do like all the purple flowers, all the pink flowers, all the green of the stems, and then also do aerial and tink. So I am going to get to embroidering. I will show you a little bit of that, but mostly I'm gonna show you how to put the pocket together. 
So I have found some fabric here for the pocket. I've decided to go with this sparkle pink cotton because I just think it will be appropriate for a Disney pocket. And I am going to trace around my existing pocket to use this as my pattern. Now I am going to cut out the back side of the pocket. That's what this one's gonna be. I'm gonna cut out the back. And then I'm going to use the back side as a template to draw the pocket shape on a larger piece of fabric. This fabric is really too small to hoop, which is why I'm doing the back out of here, which is undecorated, and then the front will be out of this. And I'm not going to cut the actual what I draw on on here. I'm actually just going to draw it on and then hoop it. So I'm going to draw both the shape and also the slit line. And that way those will give me markers as far as where to place the embroidery over here. I'll show you what this looks like hooped. So I guess I probably ought to show you how I'm even determining where to draw the pocket on this weird scrap of fabric. And so I have used this hoop a lot before and I know that I can't embroider past this. This is the end of the actual stitch area. So I don't want my pocket to really go more than eh, about a half an inch past that because I'm not embroidering to the very bottom. I want to stay at least an inch from the edge of here. And then I want it to be centered in the hoop area with enough fabric on the side and the top up here to actually get gripped into the hoop. So this is my placement right here. I have already ironed the fabric underneath. Now I am laying this out and I am going to draw on this pocket shape with my friction pen underneath and I'm going to bring that line down here. The other thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is lining up the center with the center of the hoop. So that should be a pretty good placement. I'm going to draw that out, draw that line out, and then hoop this fabric with some interfacing underneath. I really hope my interfacing is up to the task because I don't have the sturdy tearaway I like. I have a slightly lighter tearaway and this is a pretty dense design. So we'll see how this goes. And this is what it looks like in the hoop. So again, I've gone only a little bit past this line here. This is almost center. I will probably have to tweak my design like one little beep this way, uh, maybe, maybe two. I, actually, it's it's oh, it's off here by about one click, but it's on here, so I may just have to rotate one click that way. The design has enough room to play in this hoop that that will be fine. I just couldn't go a whole lot of degrees off. And this is my cut line for the slit, but I've actually continued my marks all the way down because that helps me determine where my center is all the way. So now it's time to embroider. So to find the placement of where this embroidery needs to go, all I have to do on this machine is press this button right here. Say okay. I have moved my machine hopefully far enough forward on this table, it's like almost all the way off the table. And this is now scanning what is in the hoop and we'll pop that up on screen over here. This is a Brother Quattro 3, by the way. This is from like 2014. It was the top of the line. I'm sure it is no longer, but this is like a feature that I could not do without an embroidery. I will show you what that looks like when it's done because this is gonna take a second. Yay, we're far enough away from the wall. And now you can see the line and the edges popped up on there. And I can now move my embroidery. And it's moving the whole thing because I'm in sewing mode right now. So I can move it to best fit this design. I decided after that first scan that I really wanted some additional guidelines in here to tell me where I was going. So I've drawn those marks in one inch from the edge. I also drew marks in by the slit about a half inch away and that will give me a better idea now over here where I'm placing my design. You can see those marks all in there. I have positioned the embroidery design like I want it. It's a little close to the line in the middle, so I may actually wind up moving the cut line up, but this was how I could get it centered and balanced. And I have saved it to my memory right here, which means that if something gets interrupted, I know the exact position placement. I've threaded my machine and we are ready to put our foot down and go. And keep your fingers crossed that this machine plays nicely. I'll be back periodically, 
but this is after all a 70 minute stitch out. So we're gonna be a while. Tinkerbell is already looking so stinking cute. Look at her go. Oh, I wish I had done that hair a little more yellow. I thought this was gonna stitch out slightly more yellow. Oh well, I think it'll be fine. Tinkerbell is now done. I was kind of debating about not doing the black outline and in hindsight, I kind of wish I hadn't. I feel like she went from being soft to very harsh. Now I am going and doing the leaves of all of the flowers. There are, I think, five flower motifs, something like that. And unfortunately, they all pop up as separate things instead of being like all leaves, all purple flowers, all pink flowers. Um, but I am going to skip around. I can skip around using these options here. I can skip via thread color. And I am going to skip around to do all the leaves so that I'm not constantly changing the thread because that is silly. So it is now on to the aerial part of the embroidery. What I didn't realize was that her ball gown was fully over one of the flowers. So there's like a weird texture going on there. But I think once the rest of the ball gown is done, that that will not be so obvious, hopefully. And the embroidery is done. Again, I'm not sure I like all of the black lines. Like I think it gets really heavy on her eyes, especially. And also it did weird boob decoration on there that I would not have done if I realized it looked like that. But overall, I think it's very pretty. Dora seems to like it too. And now it's ready to be made into a pocket. So the next step in this pocket project, I mean, I removed the stabilizer from the pocket. This is what the back of the pocket looks like. And honestly, it's pretty rough. And so I want to put a lining on that. So I have cut out a piece of muslin and that is going to act as the lining for the front piece. So at this point there, I'm going to put them together and treat them as one, basically. I don't really need to do any basting or anything like that. I'm just going to put them together like side by side and, or, you know, back to back. And I am going to pin them in place. And then I am going to cut the slit because the next bit with the slit is that we need to bind both the slit and also the outside of the pocket while putting it together. We can do this all in one. You don't have to like assemble the pocket and then also bind it. The binding can work as the assembly with the sandwiching. So Normally I would just bind it with bias tape, but none of my bias tapes that I have in my stash were the wide width that I wanted and would look good with this. So I have cut bias strips of the pink glitter fabric and I am going to use this. This is a one and a half inch wide strip. I am going to fold and press it like bias tape and use that to bind both the slit and the outside of the pocket. And I'm gonna do that now. So the key to binding around this tight bottom of the slit is that, I hope you can see since this is pink on white, but you do a kind of a square around in that 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then you cut little slits to the corner. Obviously you don't want to clip your thread, so do be careful, but you need to cut that little slit because that will help you once you have pressed and folded everything, it'll help you get that shape that looks like that on the inside of the bias tape. Now I'm just going to be able to stitch in the ditch from the front side and it will wind up going around nicely. I'm doing this all by machine, by the way. And that is the key you need to clip those corners and that way you get a nice little turn. And now that the pocket slit is nicely bound on the front side right here, we can flip that onto the back side, pin around the outsides, and do our binding on the outside. So for the ties of the pocket, what I've done is I've cut another strip of bias and I joined it to the leftover bias from the center opening of the pocket. So this is now about, I don't know, like 45, 50 inches long, something like that. It's plenty for Casey because she's tiny. And so this is going to be the ties. I have folded this so that there is a center fold and then it's folded again and like bias tape, double fold bias tape. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to find the center point right here. And this center point is going to match up with the pocket slit on the pocket. And I'm just going to fold this over the top of the pocket matching that center point. And then I'm going to do a zigzag stitch 
all the way along the bias, across the top on the bias, on the pocket, and again down the other end of the bias. And that zigzag stitch will hold everything together on here, but it will also still allow, because this is bias, not straight edge, it is gonna have a little stretch. So the zigzag is going to move a little with the bias as opposed to a straight stitch, which if you stretch the bias, it could just pop. So this is something that I frequently do on pockets, 18th century petticoats, etc. is that zigzag up here at the top you can see that so it's just it's what I do it makes it really easy this is just uh, store-bought bias tape on this one and you can see it has that little bit of stretch but no problem with the zigzag so I'm gonna go do that and then the pocket will be done it's done I am super pleased how it turned out. I think it is so, so cute. And now it is ready to be shipped off to Casey and I get to wait for my own pocket to arrive. So I will see you as soon as that pocket arrives for an unboxing. It's been a couple of weeks, but it is finally time for the unboxing portion of this video. My package has just arrived all the way from Calgary, Canada, and now I get to see what Mare from Stringchronicity sent me. So I will link to Stringchronicity's channel down below in the description. Make sure that you go check her out, just like you check out Casey's channel. And let's see what this pocket looks like. I feel like there are other things in here besides just a pocket. Oh my. Okay, there's a cute card first. Got a cute little spooky cat on it and some spider webs. Very appropriate. So her note says, Dear Rebecca, Happy Pocket Swap 2021. I have pinched Lady Tremaine's pocket. I'm not good at reading cursive, so this might be a second. I have pinched Lady Tremaine's pocket for you. Hopefully you will be able to give it a good home. I may have poked an obscene amount of holes in it. From Mare, String Chronicity, I may have also included a couple of Canadian goodies. That's exciting. Got it all wrapped in tissue here. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's so sparkly. Okay, I don't want to drop anything. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love the fabric. I don't know if you can tell, but it is a flocked fabric, like a flocked taffeta that is glitter flocked. So that is very fun with that red crochet lace or tatted lace on the outside. And it does seem to be filled with goodies. So let's see what Canadian goodies are, considering I live only two and a half hours from Canada. Coffee Crisp. I've never seen this before. Nestle Coffee Crisp. Okay, I'll have to try that. This is exciting. This is like Kiralee and I did a swap from Kiralee Cosplay. She and I did a swap a while ago from uh, Australian and American goodies. So that was fun too. So Arrow. I love Arrow bars. The Mint Arrow is my favorite. I got hooked on them when I lived in Florida and worked for Disney because when you go to Disney, you can buy stuff at Disney that is from all over when you go to Epcot. So yeah, I love Arrow. Oh, and Smarties. I think their Smarties are different. I don't remember. I, I think I've had Smarties before, but Smarties, it feels like there might be something else in here. Okay, no, that's everything. So the rest is just the pocket, I think. Yes. Oh, there's a pocket in the pocket. There's a pocket in the pocket. There is. That's exciting. That's such a good idea. I wish that I had thought to do that for Casey's pocket. So I don't know how well I can actually show this. The pocket is lined with cotton, but right back here, there is a pocket in the pocket, which is such a great idea because I always, in fact, actually it's a divided pocket. So even better. I always, when I'm putting stuff in my 18th century pockets, you know, you put something in and then it's just all one big bag and everything gets jumbled around. So having a little double pocket. Oh, there's also a little Mickey embroidered in here. Look at the hidden Mickey. That's adorable. Oh, that's so cute. This is going to be really handy to use. And I love that interior double pocket in there. That's going to be so good to not lose all those small things down in the bottom. So 
I'm very, very excited. The top, by the way, is velvet, so that feels really nice. Very excited about this pocket from Mare. Thank you so much, Mare. And Casey, I hope that you enjoy your pocket. I believe that she's going to be doing a whole other video on her channel of the unboxing there, just like Mare should be doing a video on her channel of the making of this pocket. So again, I will link both of their channels down below in the description. Make sure you go check them out and you can see everyone's pockets. And again, I also have that playlist to everyone's videos in the whole Pocket Swap 2021 collaboration as well. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please make sure to go and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!